What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about software engineer expectations versus reality. That's right, a lot of software engineers, especially new grads, people who are just getting into the industry, but also people who have been in the industry for a while and are switching companies, a lot of them have certain expectations about what it's like to work as a software engineer, what it's going to be like to work at the company that they're going to be working at, but then the reality isn't necessarily always what they expected it to be. So in this video, we're going to look at five software engineer expectations and how they compare to the reality of things. Now, before I jump into these expectations, I just very quickly want to invite you to follow me on LinkedIn if you enjoy short form written content about software engineering, entrepreneurship, and all sorts of other things. Just yesterday, I was named one of the top LinkedIn voices in 2020 in the technology category. So clearly, I must have some sort of value insight. If you think that that would interest you, don't hesitate to follow me there. And now let's actually jump into the expectations. The first expectation is one that I've actually mentioned on this channel before, but in a different context. And it's the fact that a lot of software engineers, when they're getting ready to join a company, they expect that they'll be working on some super exciting stuff, especially if the company has an exciting product or service. As an example, let's say that you're a front-end engineer and you're about to work at Coinbase, the cryptocurrency exchange. You might expect that you'll get to work on the cryptocurrency exchange, and it's going to be super fancy, super exciting. That does sound exciting. Or if you're a software engineer who's about to work, let's say, at Algo Expert, my company, by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews or systems design interviews, do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, CLEM, for a discount on the platform. You might expect that you're going to work on the coding workspace or on the remote code execution that we have behind the platform in the back end. And those things sound really exciting, but the truth is, the reality of things is, that most of the time as a software engineer, you are not going to be working working on the super exciting, sexy features things. And that's not because those super sexy, exciting features are reserved for a select few people. No, it's because ultimately those really exciting parts of software engineering only account for 5 or 10% of what you actually have to build. You also have to build more boring stuff. So if you're a front-end engineer, you're going to have to put a lot of forms on pages. If you're a back-end engineer, you're going to have to build a lot of simple API endpoints. And that's just the reality of things. Expectation number two, this one especially affects software engineers who are about to join a big, reputable tech company like Google or Microsoft, but also software engineers who are about to join an up-and-coming startup, especially startups that are pretty reputable, you tend to have this expectation that you're about to work on the best code bases in the world, the cleanest code bases, the highest quality code that you've ever seen, and that's not entirely true. That's not entirely accurate. Well, of course, it is probably true that the average code base at Google has a higher quality standard than the average code base at other tech companies. Ultimately, there are still a lot of code bases at Google, in fact, I would probably say the majority, that have certain parts, certain corners that aren't all that pretty. All code bases have skeletons buried. At one point or another in the lifespan of a code base, the engineers maintaining that code base have had to cut corners to make trade-offs. And also, a lot of code bases work in older technologies, kind of legacy technologies, or like they're just legacy code bases. For example, at Google, on Google Cloud Platform, there were a lot of code bases that were built in the older versions of Angular. If you don't like the older versions of Angular, well, right then and there, that's not going to be the best code base you've ever seen. And you might see some things where you're like, okay, this is just not the best code base. This is not what I expected for such a reputable company. But you just have to get this expectation, this super high expectation, out of your head because it's not entirely reflective of reality. Expectation number three is that once you're a software engineer in the industry, you're going to be spending all of your time coding. If you have a 40-hour work week, you're going to be spending roughly 40 hours a week coding at your computer using your keyboard. And that's just 
not true. I've said it many times before on this channel, software engineers do a lot more than just coding. They go to meetings, they review other people's code, they write design docs, they whiteboard with their coworkers about certain design decisions or certain code decisions. They might be working on peer reviews for performance uh, and promotions and things like that. There's a lot more to a software engineer's job than just coding. And if I had to estimate it, at least for me, for, for my experience, when I was at Google and at Facebook and even now on Algo Expert, I probably coded about 40% of my time. And actually now on Algo Expert, it's much less than that, probably like 10 to 20% of my time, probably even less than 20%. Now it's much more just reviewing code. And by the way, this expectation versus reality might be a positive or a negative depending on the type of person that you are. The fourth expectation has to do with the types of people that you think you're gonna be working with as a software engineer. I think that a lot of software engineers expect that they'll only be working with other software engineers. And that's just not true a lot of the time, especially the closer to customers you work. So for example, if you work on the front end or if you work on the back end of an API that is customer facing, an API, especially like for example, a cloud API, if you work at a cloud provider like Google Cloud Platform or Amazon Web Services, those APIs are publicly facing or publicly visible. And so oftentimes, when you work close to customers, you're gonna be working with other functions. You're gonna be working with product managers, you're gonna be working with uh, UX writers, UX designers, you might even be client facing sometimes, you might interact with clients, or maybe you'll go to conferences where you have to interact with clients. And also, if you're not just a software engineer, let's say you're a you know customer advocate or, or you know customer solutions engineer or developer advocate engineer, those types of engineering roles also have a lot of you know time spent with non-engineers or people like at other companies. So the point is, you're not always just gonna be working with software engineers. That's something that a lot of engineers expect, but that just doesn't end up being actually true. Of course, your mileage may vary here, but I would say that on average, that is not true. The fifth and final expectation has to do with how you think or expect that decisions are gonna be made at a company. So I think that a lot of software engineers, especially in this day and age where software engineers have almost like this inflated ego because they know that they can command super high salaries and every tech company out there claims that it is an engineering driven company. Google is an engineering driven company. Most startups are engineering driven companies. They're built by engineers for engineers. And so you come in thinking that as an engineer, you will be able to command everything, that all decisions will be made in favor of you, the engineer. Any preferences that you have as an engineer will be met. Decisions at the company will be made such that your preferences as an engineer are met. And that is just not true a lot of the time. At the end of the day, I hate to break it to you, but this is especially visible to me running Algo Expert. A business is run by the business, not by the engineering. The engineering happens to be an incredibly important aspect of a business. It's the, the fuel that makes the business run. It's the thing that allows the business to even function. But at the end of the day, the business stuff, the business stuff, right, is what is gonna make the decisions. Money is gonna run the business, not whether you prefer React over Angular, if that makes sense. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that you shouldn't be too surprised if once you join a specific company, you end up kind of feeling a little bit annoyed sometimes or wondering why are these decisions being made? It feels like from an engineering point of view, this is not correct. It's not the way to go. I don't really like this. Well, you are not really in charge as a software engineer. It's really the business and the product, or rather the product, but then even further up the business that is guiding everything. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is in most companies. That's not to say that it sucks to be an engineer. No, and the engineer's role is super, super important. That feeling of self-importance that you have as a software engineer is not entirely inaccurate or misplaced, but just don't have your expectations too high because you might be you know, disappointed. That's all I've got for you with these five expectations and the reality of things. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures and otherwise I will see you in the next video.